Aloha everybody, welcome back. Mahalo for watching. I want to thank you all for subscribing. Hit that bell symbol if you haven't already. I want to thank you for viewing my videos. This has been an awesome journey. I know recently I've been concentrated on the volcanic eruption of 2018. You can understand that, I hope. It's been an amazing journey and I just want to thank you all for coming along with me and, and taking this ride, um, this up and down ride, this adventure. Now, I'm at a point in my YouTube career, if you want to call it that, it's really my only job right now, uh, and I'm making decent money. I have stopped my GoFundMe because uh, it's just, I don't think, necessary. And I just want to thank you all for helping me out. Now YouTube is uh, supplementing the income that I lost uh, because of this eruption. I just want to thank you all. So I'm over 70,000 subscribers and I'm at a point where I can help my community and promote uh, their business or you know people in my community to help them. And this is an interview of the citizen scientist of Pune. Don't go away. Action. Okay, gentlemen. To introduce yourself, starting with John. Aloha, I'm John. John Stallman. Hi, I'm Philip Hong. <laughs> I'm Dane Dupont. Awesome. These are some of the citizen scientists that have been helping Puna for the past, geez, what, six months now? Seven almost. Seven months? Yeah, during this 2018 eruption. And I want to just Thank you guys, it's been awesome because I've gotten a lot of my information from John, Philip, and Dane, um, especially with like, you know, Dane with the houses, Philip with the eruption, and uh, John with the eruption as well, uh, pretty much on a daily uh, for a while there, right, for, yeah. for a couple months. Yeah. And so you guys were saying, and, okay, so now we're at the hub and the hub will stop uh, serving uh, food or, or distributing food? Distributing all supplies. All supplies on the 17th or 14th. Okay, so the 14th. As long as things last for the Okay, okay, and then there's going to be a dinner at the hub on the 14th? Yeah, that's for. Okay, so that's like a Friday or something, right? Friday, yeah. Okay, sounds good. Okay, awesome. Okay, so I wanted to uh, ask John. If uh, so, you're a tour uh, guide, right? Yep. That's one of your yeah. jobs. Because yep. I get asked a lot by my viewers, you know, if I will do a tour or if I know someone, and I'm too introverted to uh, meet everyone and do a tour. So, mm -hmm. if you would uh, talk a little bit about <laughs> your tour business, because I will provide a link in the description box. Okay. If there's like a website. Right. Or anything. There's, there's, for right now, my main uh, place where I do tours is through the nonprofit, the Friends of Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. So um, that's F B H B and Friends of Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. The letters F H B N P dot org. Right. I think that's our website. But anyway, you can uh, contact them and we do any size group for uh, any anywhere in the park or out of the park. And if you hire a tour with the friends, the profits that we make go into park programs, youth ranger programs, nene conservation, sea turtles. And so I do most of my tours through the park. Um, as I've grown through this eruption, people contacting to me, I'm gonna start probably doing some of my own private tours. Um, but that's something I still need to work out uh, with companies. So for now, you can contact Friends of Hawaii Volcanoes National Park and ask for John. And as long as I'm available the day you're looking at, we can set up a tour with me. And we also have a lot of expert guides through that or organization too. Okay, awesome. So again, I will have the link in the description box. So check that out. And Philip, you are a tour guide as well? Yes, for many years I, okay. I was a tour guide for Random Account Discovery Hawaii. And when I shut that down, um, I actually worked in most of my friends for a short time. Okay. And I've stopped doing that as well. Um, okay. So as of right now, I am not offering tours. You're not offering tours. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. John, it's great. Yeah, you can go with me. Yeah. <laughs> we're the friends, and I have a, hopefully I'll be able to make available uh, 
uh, private tours with me and we can do stuff in or out of the park. I just need to set that up for operating a, a tour within the park. There are rules about these things. So for now, through the friends is the way to set that up. But, okay, that's awesome. And uh, what else do you have to promote? Uh, I got John. my, my oh. eruption lens app that is so far for iOS. I'm trying to get the Android out as soon as possible, but it's still not out right now. And there's a link to that where you can go download that. Yeah, I'll provide that store, in yeah. the description yeah. box. Yeah, it's, uh, cool. Right now it's uh, selling for $5. Okay. On, uh, it's, store. it's a family package, so you know, everyone uh, knows iOS, knows how it works. Buy one and everyone in family gets to use it. And it, it's basically just a simple, easy way to get all the information that would be related to earthquakes, volcanic activity, I, and... I think of it as like a visual kind of journey through the different eruptions of the volcano as seen from different places, mostly in the park. Okay. Um, but I did just recently, my, my update I just put out, uh, I don't know how long it's been out, a couple weeks, um, put in the hub as an actual viewpoint. Okay. Um, there's not much like lava that was flowing right here, obviously, so everything's relative to here. Fish rate was over that way. Was over that way, you know, the Big Bad was over that way, for example, and it kind of gives you an idea from here where things were, but it also kind of details the sequence of events, right? So I did put up the update that includes that. Okay. And three new park viewpoints, right? Kanakakoi Crater, where okay. you can actually see a Volcano House and a Steaming Bluff. They're all places you can now see the Summit Caldera, which you couldn't, you know, before the best place to see it was a Jagger. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the view site. It's not still in there as a virtual, virtual site in the app, so if you want to go to the Jagger, Overlook, that's probably the only way you can do it now is by going virtually like that. So okay. that's kind of one of the cool things about that. Okay. Same with Lava Ocean Entry, it's in there virtually, all of Kua'o and all of that. So if you guys want to hear like, the, or see the visual history, that's the way to put it basically the lights. Okay, awesome. Again, I will have links in the description box to everything we're talking about. And Dane, you really don't have much to promote. Not really. No, you... mostly uh, <coughs> Y-Tracker in general. Y-Tracker is a Facebook group that is uh, so you'd have to if you're not a part of it you just uh, you know fill in the application it's pretty straightforward to be part of the group and it's a very large group for uh, Facebook groups uh, we just focus on mainly any kind of disaster current events uh, very little politics it's not the place to go for politics uh, but it, if it's relating to an eruption or disaster then it's relevant but uh, just, yeah, it's, and there's a ton of photographers that are just experts in their field that post there daily or sometimes, you know, weekly, but just guys that have years and years and years of experience and uh, expertise that almost can't be matched. And to have them, and have, it just helps build this uh, community. And that's kind of what it is, is an online virtual community for, the, for Hawaii specifically. Uh, just a white tracker on Facebook. Okay, I'll provide a link to that okay. as well. Okay, so... Actually, I'm, I'm part of Tracker a little yeah. bit also. Yeah, yeah you so guys are all pretty much yeah, kind of, trackers, yeah. Hawaii uh, trackers. But what I wanted to say, what uh, is interesting is that it's actually like a, uh, it's a moderated group, right? It's yeah, not it's like a... Moderated. Yeah, it's not like yeah. a thing where people just start spewing or whatever, right? It's usually like, vetted. It's very, a very yeah. directed kind of to be constructive conversation almost all the time. That's what right. I appreciate most yeah. about it. And I thought it's worth pointing out, right? Yeah. And the only thing I wanted to say is like, how big is the group? Uh, we just went over 50,000 members. We just hit that milestone. And before the eruption, I think it was about 2,000 members. Yeah, because it was created for this. Uh, 2014. To the 14 one. Okay. And then this one was a lot more in your face. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of really important info went across those channels that, yeah. and some of it was posted by us but other times it would just be somebody that was there that is posting live and it's highly relevant to what's going on it's like the most current you can get because yeah it's citizens pretty yeah. much right here they, they they can you know citizens can raise a warning about something that's happening a current event that or you know something that's potentially happening and for people that don't know for the first couple weeks, I think it was about three weeks, Civil Defense was only updating, uh, uh, what was it, six in the morning, once a day, I think it was, right. for like a, for a few weeks. So it was always old news, yep. <laughs> right? Because it was, it was from the day before, but you were getting it in the morning. So uh, citizens, scientists, you know, were helping the community greatly. 
and without uh, this this network a lot of people would have been even more confused and more um, uh, displaced and and had a lot more trouble and so I think civil defense took a lot from you guys Oh yeah. right yeah. took a lot of how to do things do like three updates I mean you and Akaika you guys in Akaika were doing you know sometimes three four updates uh, right. a day sometimes right more when it was necessary. Yeah. exactly exactly so but that's what the community needed we needed at least a few updates a day yeah and between and all of us there was probably on a day that it was active you probably get like six seven eight nine ten updates in that day mm -hmm. that are designed to be updates from the previous update and sometimes it's only been two three hours since the last update <laughs> yeah things change like the native flow was moving towards Kapoho was changing every few hours it was something new yeah people needed to know yes uh, exactly so absolutely justified yeah I think yeah, the information in real time yeah it's yep. definitely necessary this time yeah it's and interesting how the 2014 eruption what was really different was information distribution yes and that eruption towards this one right because there wasn't really the space for this to happen yeah four years ago yeah and and also I think a lot of people forgot that eruption the 2014 and it spilled over into 2015 I think uh, a lot of people and I've talked about this before pretty much forgot about it and you know the the housing market was going back up you know there was actually uh, you know a lot of building um, months uh, maybe even about a year prior to this eruption I would drive in Leilani and I would always see a, a new construction so there's a lot of new construction so I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up right here but uh, first I want to just go individually uh, I want some predictions <laughs> but uh, starting with John uh, what do you feel is the future for Pune how how should just shortly, in a few sentences, how should we proceed with building houses and development? Well, I think um, just what you said is really right on the money. Um, even after the 2014 incident, we are quick to forget how serious that actually could have been. If it destroyed Pahoa and cut off 10,000 people, that changes the entire lifestyle down here and this eruption has done the same and i think it's still setting in how different it really is and uh, for the future you know the volcano is already showing refilling in the eastern rift um, not a huge amount of time has passed since this major major event so i wouldn't be surprised if we see more activity in Pune within the next months or years but it okay. it could also be two to four years four to five years mm -hmm. but is that really a lot of time to enjoy your new house if you're building it you know so it's it's a weird balance like there are people living where the ground is cracked and wondering if they should invest and rebuild and and depending on the situation you might want to uh, ration your supplies, ration your investment, live simply mm -hmm. um, because we can count on it erupting again, um, whether that's the long term or short term. It's kind of like socially we need to adjust and, and live a more um, flexible, temporary sort of lifestyle rather than investing all of this in, the, in what we're creating here yeah. because the, the nature of the place is that it, it will take all of that away eventually. Stop so. building. Uh, uh, mainland houses. <laughs> right. I talked to one woman while it was erupting and the river of lava was flowing who had a house like right adjacent to the flow channel over near the Y. And I, she told me where she lived and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, you guys must be so stressed. It could break out of the channel. And she said, no, it's no problem. We've lived here for generations, so we, we didn't really invest much in our house. So, you know, it would suck to lose the house, but it's it's not, not as huge a consequence. So that's kind of the mentality that I would suggest we adopt. Okay. And uh, you're pretty much going to echo the same thing, right? I mean, it's going to be, it's, it's up in the air, right? So, Puna, guaranteed it's going to erupt again. Yes. When and where is the big question that is really unanswerable at this point. Yes. And it doesn't matter what I think when it's going to happen. Yes. How people live down here. Yeah. Right. The way people live down here doesn't matter what I think when it's going to happen or doesn't. So I, I don't even have to answer that. Right. Like how do you live in a place that you know has a, a you know ha essentially a constant hazard? Right. It's not there all the time, but like 
you can constant risk in a drive yeah, yeah. yeah. risk mm -hmm. and hazard yeah um, you know you can live in a drive 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 alley and you might get a flash flood in a hundred year storm only yeah right and you know that's that's you know maybe not an exact similar risk but it's a risk that people choose to take as well right so it's just a matter of that's the nature of the risk that we have here is volcanic, right? Mm -hmm. In Pune in particular, right? I mean, like, you know, down by the coast, you kind of add some other hazards. Yeah. Well, that's, I, I get a lot of people on my channel saying, oh, you guys are so dumb for building a house and blah, blah, blah. And then I have to come back and go, well, you're so dumb for living in Texas or Louisiana or California <laughs> or where it's cold. <laughs> Place has yeah. their own risks. Yep. Right? yep. And there aren't many safe places to cast stones from. No. Type of thing. No, not at all. <laughs> it's definitely true. So, so I can pretty much assume you guys are saying it's not done. We pretty much established that, and just be careful where you spend your money, and don't be building that million-dollar house. Uh, in Leilani. <laughs> and in Leilani, you got to stay aware of it. You, you, yeah. You have to be aware of the changes when they occur to be ready. Uh, it's, it's a strange puzzle. And and then I also. Sorry, before you yeah, go off. Yeah, too yeah. Much, yeah. I, yeah, have it's a stuff to say to. That yeah. Too. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they're right in the assessments for kill the way in general. The thing that I think is needs to change is the county's not allowing for mobile homes and who. Mm -hmm. That needs to be reevaluated because then there's a chance to get away from the thing and not lose everything. And even yes. if it is coming towards you, all you need is a day to get it out of there. Type of thing. Um, that needs to be examined again. Even if the answer comes back no, it needs to be seriously considered. Yes, on on the ballot, on the yeah. on the agenda. Yeah, and it, it needs to be taken seriously because not allowing that is pretty counterintuitive at this point yes i i totally agree with you guys and i want to thank you all for sitting down with me yeah. and helping the community over the past seven months it's been a wild ride and uh yeah <laughs> and i just want to say aloha to everybody aloha, aloha. Stay classy, San Diego. I mean, Puna. <laughs> <laughs>